welcome to another video as you can see things have changed a little bit in here over the past couple of months um, just gonna get it straightened out turn it into a brewery again rather than a uh, garage and I'll be back once it's all done and uh, we can get started with a brew so this last week um, I was approached by a company called brew packs uh, here in the UK uh, they've been a, um, a major supplier to a lot of the, um, the homebrew stores um, for 25 years or so, I believe, way before I was brewing. And they've just started, I think, the back, of, back end of last year to um, open their own shop and take that kind of uh, leap of faith. And they've bought out a new range of their mash kits and they asked me if I'd like to review a mash kit. And obviously I said yes. Uh, so yeah, full disclosure, I chose the mash kit and they sent it to me free of charge and all my opinion is my own, etc, etc, etc. So uh, box is down here, very well packaged. And in the box is the mash kit itself. And it should have everything we want already in the box. So it's already in the bucket. So let's have a look. So apologies for the uh, bit of a dodgy angle there and the array of motorcycle fluids. Like I said, this was kindly provided to me free of charge for an honest review. And uh, that's what we're gonna do. So first off, very handy buckets to have. They've also offered uh, myself and my subscribers or viewers 10% um, off in their store which is live now and the code for that will be further in the video because I know what you're gonna do you're just gonna look at that and then you're gonna bugger off so uh, yeah let's get into it see what you get in the uh, in the book at <laughs> obviously the gyms are closed Oh, smoky. So in here we have all grain recipe booklet. We have some hops. And I can tell you the um, the ingredients in detail because all of the um, ingredients and instructions are on their website already uh, for you to download in PDF. So that's handy if you uh, misplace anything or get it covered in beer like I normally do. William Et. This is quite exciting. And fuggles. Yeah, yeast is in here, I think. Let's get into this. So I've just got the grains out of the way for a sec. Here is the all grain recipe booklet and the yeast, SO4. Not too shabby. So these are all of the um, mash kits that they do and more importantly here is our beer that we're going to be mating mating Ugh. making which is the Chateau Belgian IPA so the style and taste for this beer should be after I've brewed it the perfect answer for enthusiasts who want hoppy IPA character combined with a complex fruity spicy character of Belgian strong pale ales sounds gorgeous so it's a 90 minute boil and we have a mass schedule down here and a fermentation schedule as well and some lagering to do. Yeah, it looks good. Looks good so far. So just going to get the grain father up to temperature and we'll be back for the uh, mashing in. Dusty. So the first step on here on the mash schedule uh, it says to collect roughly three litres of water per kilo of grain um, that's an excellent guide for people who have got like the three vessel system and stuff like that but because I'm using the grain father I've used a grain father app uh, to tell me how much mash and sparge water to use because of the recirculation and what I'm going for there's 6.16 kilos of grain 23 litres batch volume 
and a 90 minute boil gives me 20 litres mash water and 14 litres sparge water. I'm not going to be treating my water with this brew. Uh, there's no recommendation on this sheet. Um, maybe that could be something that could be added. A, uh, a target water profile or area or anything like that. So I'm not going to be adjusting my water at all just to see exactly what this kit comes out at. Mash temperature looks to be 63 degrees which is very low. I'm going to roll with it anyway um, and maintain that temperature for 50 minutes. Bring the temperature up to 72 for another 20 minutes and then 78 for two minutes and then sparge and sparge says it should last 45 to 60 minutes so I'll make sure, be sure to do a very slow sparge excuse me the dragon I'm on the telly what's up yeah all right cool nice one da, da, da. apologies very unprofessional so I've decided to strap the GoPro to my noggin this time so temperature is currently at 63 degrees I'm just going to cross check it with this 63.1 good that ok so grab a grain and a spoon and let's get mashing in ah grain stopper where's that gonna be spot on Get a grip. We have light. This bucket is definitely going to come in handy to uh, measure my grains. Uh, it's not big enough to ferment 23 litres in, but it's perfect for all of your uh, measured grains. So what I have found, <coughs> excuse me, with the grain father, because it's a 90 minute boil and a 6 litre, uh, a 6 kilo grain bill, it's filled it right up, but we'll get there, it'll be alright. Smells absolutely incredible. And do you know what? Mashing in should be a scented candle, shouldn't it? Imagine that. Beautiful smell. Okay. We have some recirculation. Let's um, get the sparge water on the go. And with this we need 14 litres, which is about there. So we need to change the mash temperature in 48 minutes uh, from 63 um, so there's two steps 63 then 72 then 78 yeah and then we'll heat the sparge water up to 80 degrees if I can find a plug So that's 50 minutes at 63 complete. It's um, been holding its temperature pretty good. Water clearing out nicely. There's a bit, uh, quite a few little bits floating about, but that just could be because of the um, the how how the uh, 
grain is crushed maybe it's not ideal for the grain father I don't know but uh, it'll come out in the wash so we're going to up this to 72 degrees and once it gets there we'll start the timer then for 20 minutes uh, just going to ramp this up to 78 degrees uh, keep it there for a couple of minutes, uh, pop it up to 80 and then start the sparge. This sparge tank's already at 80 degrees. So yeah, we're looking to rock and roll. like the look of it so far. Up this now to 80 degrees. Knock the pump off and start the sparge process. Knock my sparge water off. to find a better storage solution now I've got a smoker sharing this room with me. Right, let's go. So the it's freely draining. Doesn't look like there's gonna be any issues with any stuck sparge, which is awesome. So I'll just wait for this top bit to clear out a bit first. Oh look at that clarity coming. I think we're okay to uh, start sparging slowly. Yeah, spot on. Good darts. So we're just waiting for the last 10 minutes of the sparge. I'm going to start up in the temperature towards uh, the boil temperature. So increase it from 80 degrees right up to 100. And by the time the sparge time is finished, um, we should be ready to, uh, to hit the boil. So it's just hit the boil. I'm just trying to stir this in. Stop any boil over. Looking very good. There's something very, uh, very nice of just having all the hops pre-measured, pre-packaged, and uh, obviously the the grain as well. Found a good use for the old grain bucket as well already. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so we're at uh, 85 minutes. We'll go in with 62 grams of thuggles. Oh yes. Lovely jubbly, in they go. Make sure they're all in. Oh, they're definitely fresh. Ooh. So whilst that's doing its thing, um, don't need to do anything now in terms of hop drops. For, uh, until 10 minutes left of the boil so yeah quite a while to wait as is accustomed to this hobby as soon as you hit the boil open a beer Lervig house party very apt yes it are that's nice very mango oh come on there's a description man no, nothing. Session IPA, 4%. Cheers for that. So, we arrived at the 10 minute, 10 minute edition. Only one beer so far, I promise. Uh, which is 49 grams of East Kent Goldings. <laughs> then they go. I 
and the last top edition is Williamette, 49 grams of, that's five minutes to go. Beautiful. There's a lot of hops in this beer. Right, so once this five minutes is up, I'm gonna um, turn the heat off, uh, put the lid on, and just leave it for about 15 minutes or so, let all the hops settle down, and uh, before I hook up the counterflow chiller and sort out the fermenter in that time as well. So I'll see you when we're transferring. Don't know what that was, but yeah. Beer's clearing out pretty nicely. It's ready now to uh, hook up to the counterflow chiller. Um, I did tidy up, and if you think that that floor is soaking wet because I've been very good and mocked it, you'd be wrong because half of the fermenter, or the fermenter fell on my hands as I was shaking it, and uh, star sand went everywhere. But could be worse, could be beer. Let's grab a beer. Uh, can I do this one handed? Oh, like an adult. Go on! Vocation Life and Death IPA. Beautiful. Lovely colour. Pop that back there for now. Just let that recirculate for a bit. Okay, let's start the uh, counterflow chiller. We'll get this down to 23 degrees as per the destructions and then we'll uh, transfer it into the fermenter. And there we have it. That's a lovely colour on that. Nice clarity. Lovely gerbly. I almost forgot, didn't take a gravity reading. So our target's gravity, original gravity, 1.058. And uh, let's see what we've got. I've got 1.062. Whew. It's going to be a lovely IPA. Obviously people's kit and um, equipment, kit and equipment, they're the same thing, but you get what I mean. Everyone's going to have slightly different results, but um, yeah, four, four points off the mark with that one, but in, a, in the good way. So if it does finish at 1.009, then yeah, it's going to be probably a seven percenter. That help me sleep. Bang in the yeast. I like to do this whilst I'm transferring. Don't know why. Always done it rather than at the end. I just worry that the um, yeast is going to get stuck to the uh, to the lid and then not absorb into the beer. There she is, done. So that's brew day all uh, done and dusted. I've only rinsed the grain father and they're gonna be brewing another beer tomorrow, which is gonna be my orange pale ale or OPA. Yeah, absolutely flawless uh, brew day. Hit my numbers. I thought on the, whatchamacallit, not hydrometer, refractometer, on the refractometer it said 1.062 but on the tilt I've got my number bang on which is 1.058 so I'm really chuffed with that I'm going to go with the tilt obviously because it's saying what I want it to say and this which is full of spent grain and that hurt more than it should have is going to be coming in handy as well it's really nice that everything's all um, pre-measured including the hops. Obviously the yeast is just a pack of yeast. Yeah, much, much less faff and if you just want to crack on and get a brew day done rather than like I'm going to have to do tomorrow, climb over a few bikes in the back of the other shed to get to the grain, weigh it all out, weigh out all the hop schedules and stuff like that. And yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's ideal if you just want to grab and go basically. So if you go onto Brewpack's website, right on the top, there is a, um, 
Uh, our new homebrew store is online now. Check it out for some great bargains. So click on that link or just go straight to homebrewoutlet.co.uk and they have grains, hops, yeast, sundries, homebrew beer kits, which is what I uh, have just reviewed, and brewing equipment as well. Uh, and at checkout, as of today, Monday, when this goes live, if you type in homebrew griffo, like that, um, you'll get 10% off, which I think is absolutely brilliant. So again, I'd like to say a massive thank you to Brew Parks UK for um, giving me the opportunity to uh, test and review one of their products. Please head over to their website, uh, use the code, and um, yeah, spread some love. Obviously that beer now is going to be fermenting for a couple of weeks. Uh, the destruction say to lager it for two or three weeks as well. And by the time I've uh, carved it up, that's going to be another week or so. So it's going to be a number of weeks before I can do a final tasting. But yeah, I, I can tell the beer is probably going to be a really nice beer. So don't forget to subscribe for that update, which I'll obviously tag onto the back of this one in a playlist. Getting busy again in the brewery after the uh, winter hiatus. And uh, yeah, hope you're all doing well. Please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Yechida! What are you talking about? Yeah, you've just crashed the ending. Well done. That'll be in the outtakes, it's fine. Do you want to dress like a leopard? No. No?